it's it's Emma's world, and I'm so glad you joined us again today because we got a lot of great stuff to talk to you about. We have a great guest coming up. Her name is uh, Lakshmi Dev Devi. Yeah. I, I screwed that up bad. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. Don't worry. It's Say Lakshmi it one more Devi. time. Lakshmi Devi. Lakshmi Devi. Okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> My tongue was just not working. All right. Here we go. It's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's Emma, and you're hearing uh, It's Emma's World. We're back again for the weekend to have some fun with you, talking about some great things that we have coming up. And of course, we have some great guests on the line for you to enjoy and see what they got going on in the world. But before we get into all of that, please check out our website. It's www.itsemmasworld.com. And while you're there, you'll be able to see everything that we got going on in my world. So if you miss anything, go check it out. It's in our archives. We have links to all of our social media and more. Now, also very important, we love to hear stories. So you don't need to be on television or a writer or anything like that to be able to have a chance to tell your story on my on my platform. We know that people go through a lot of different things, a lot of challenges, and sometimes it's health, sometimes it's financial, sometimes it's trying to lear learn and fulfill your dreams. And yeah, we're gonna have some of those walls that pop up and we want to see how you got over them. So if you have an inspiring story to tell, please hit us up on our website and our social media as well. We'd love to be able to get you on. However, right now we have our guest, Lakshmi Devi. Devi. Uh, she is a doctor turned film director and producer, which is really cool. I mean, that's a heck of a, a career flip there. And she wrote, directed, and starred in a brand new movie, When the Music Changes. And we're going to be talking to her about her life, what made her change from uh, careers, what she's passionate about, and more. So welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. I am glad you're here to talk to us. Uh, it sounds like you had a a epif epiphany where you decided, you know what, I want to try something else. So this is going to be a great <laughs> story. I can't wait to get into your personal uh, into your personal history here <laughs> and uh, where you are today. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your life. I mean, you started off as a doctor, then you became mm -hmm. a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. what when what started you to do to do one and what inspired you to do the other um well um i didn't my all the women in my family are doctors for the most part and my mom is a doctor and so is my sister and my aunts and so on and so forth so you know i naturally kind of inclined towards that because i'm also really interested in science and medicine so i never felt anything lacking and also, I never thought that movies was an actual profession. You know, it's something that we went out and watched. It was a mystical, magical world and all of that. But I didn't think that it was actually a job. And when after I got into med school, I uh, got a few modeling offers. And then the modeling turned into acting offers. And then acting became screenwriting. Screenwriting became film direction and then production along with that. So that's kind of the art. By the time I finished med school and I graduated, I I realized that it's the arts for me. That's what I want to do. So I graduated med school and I completely immersed myself into films. And so I act and direct and produce and write now. So I got to ask this. What was the okay. what was the um, the uh, practice you were learning to to be a doctor in? Uh, no, so I I finished. I graduated from medical school, and um, I guess over here that would be in India. It's called MBBS, which is a, a bachelor in medicine degree. Uh, here, probably that would be internal medicine, general medicine. Okay. Something along those lines. Yeah. Now, seeing that you came from a line of doctors, because I know mm -hmm. I had this in my family. It wasn't doctors; it was another profession. But when I mm -hmm. told them I wanted to get in the arts and writing. They're like, mm -hmm. oh my God, there is no life in that. I mean, how it, you'll never make it, you know, and they, and they just kind of say all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Did you hear any of that when you decided to, to, to pursue a different avenue? Well, uh, for me, it was, um, um, I, I don't think they ever expected it. And, you know, it kind of came out of the blue. And I tried to like kind of handle both professions at the same time for a little bit, but it just didn't work out. 
And yeah, they had a lot of concerns because going from something that was so safe and so secure and so respectable into the artistic field where we knew no one, uh, you know, you have no backing, you don't understand it. I didn't go to school for it, you know, so, and you know, you're a girl to top, you know, to top everything off, you're a girl, like, what are you going to do? It's dangerous and so on and so forth. But when you know that something is meant for you, this just, it's not an option. Like, it doesn't matter what anyone else says. Of course, it'll be wonderful if everyone just, you know, is all hurrah, hooray from the very beginning and supports you. That's wonderful. But, you know, I guess it's just a journey that you have to take. And now, of course, my parents and my family, they are extremely encouraging and very, very proud of me. And, you know, they've been there. They've kind of seen that I've really stuck with it and like worked it out and kind of you know uh, you know I put in the time and the effort and they kind of really understand and respect that now but in the beginning it was a huge learning curve for everyone because it's not just your failure it's them inclusive they're scared they're petrified you know they don't know what you're doing you seem like you're you know aimless whereas you know I know that that wasn't true but you know it's it's a journey you know but all's well now <laughs> It is a journey. And, you know, I know firsthand that when you do something and you force yourself to do something that you just don't love, it becomes mm -hmm. a job. Yeah. And the difference between a job and a career is that a job, you're like, I got to go to work today. And yeah. you just don't have the passion and it kind of drains you inside. Yeah. It can cause depression. It can cause mm -hmm. other things. But mm -hmm. when you get up and you do something that you love every day, mm -hmm. it's not a job. It's fun. Yeah. And it becomes mm -hmm. more creative and your mm -hmm. soul picks up and there's something that happens with inside your head and your eyes mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it sparkles, you know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and I'm sure that probably would have been the same thing for you if you, if you had pursued it. Uh, pretty much. Cause that's how I realized that this is what I was meant for. Like I've been doing dance and drama from the time I was really young, but like I said, I never knew that, you know, the arts was an actual or films was an actual career choice. Uh, but then later on, I realized that I had a flair for it, but I also realized that it was my calling because yes, in med school, like you're working insane hours, you're studying, um, you know, and I'm so sorry about that, um, you know, and you're studying and all of that is kind of happening. But at the same time, um, when I got myself into med, I'm mean, sorry, when I got myself into films, I would work 24 seven. I'm on set the entire time you're standing you know God knows where you are at what point of time in the day I never got tired I would never get bored I never lost interest or anything like that you know so that's when I realized that this is kind of my calling this is what I want to do you know I sometimes I can go two or three nights even you know just writing and working and not realizing that I'm not sleeping because I'm just so interested in what I'm doing <laughs> that's when I realized that this is it you know this is kind of what my calling is and as an artist I'm sure that you the easiest time for you to get something is when you're dead tired and want to hit the bed and go to sleep and as soon as your head hits that pillow it's like oh my god I gotta get up and I gotta do this <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's been a whole like now I kind of know how to like prioritize and make sure that I get enough of rest because I do tend to burn myself out uh, you know, but like I said, you know, it's, it's been a journey, you know, and I couldn't be more grateful. Seriously, I like I just I couldn't be more grateful. And you know what I love is that I, I've talked to a lot of directors, I've talked mm -hmm. to a lot of screenwriters. I think you're the one one or, or the second female I've had a chance to talk to. So what does that feel like to be in this industry where I think more females are starting to take into this type of field, whereas before it was really a male dominated uh, mm -hmm, industry? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it, um, it's hard. I'm not going to lie. It is hard. Um, people like now, of course, there are more women coming in, but nowhere close to what is required or what should have been. Uh, you're always surrounded uh, by men. You're, it's a very male dominated industry, even now. Uh, and suppose even when it comes to actual hiring, suppose you know I'm doing another film and I wanna make sure that you know, my film set is a little bit more inclusive and you're trying to hire you know, staff accordingly. So if you try and hire the head of departments, like you're looking for a cinematographer or an editor, like the, the choices that you will have because to find women who have that kind of experience 
is rarer because they're like now we have more women coming in the field. If you're looking for someone with 10 to 15 to 20 years of experience, how many women are there? You know, so it becomes so much more difficult. Uh, you know, it's uh, I'm happy that things have started opening up now, but it's it really is, um, it, and we have a long way to go. You know that, and that's the truth. You know, we just we have a really long way to go. Let me ask you this, and it's probably going to sound a little crude, but it's the only way mm -hmm. that I know how to do it from my own experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I do I do audio video production too, mm -hmm. and I have my own business. And I know that when I talk to people, especially guys, mm -hmm. they don't take me seriously because mm -hmm. they believe that all I'm there for is sex, mm -hmm. and they look mm -hmm. at you like that, and it's like. Mm -hmm. They, it, it drives me insane. You know, mm -hmm, I was mm -hmm. actually accepted to, because I had the grades for MIT. I'm mm -hmm. not stupid, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. so they, but they talk down to me because they think mm -hmm. that I'm just this ditzy little thing mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, I'm just there for sex and nothing else. So just mm -hmm. go do what you need to do and do the mm -hmm. female thing. Mm -hmm, do you feel mm -hmm. that in the same thing? Does, do, do you get that type of situation? Yes, yes, yes. And anyone who says that they don't do, you know, they've heard about it, but it doesn't happen to them. I think it's kind of lying too, or they're just blatantly unaware. Uh, I get that all the time. They take a beat before they actually have to consider that you're serious. Uh, you are treated like a piece of meat. Now it's a little bit more different with the, uh, you know, with the Me Too movement, people are a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more careful about what they say, but then uh, you still have a lot of mansplaining. You still have a lot of like, it is, I'll be in the same row with other men of my age or of my, of my career experience. And you take it for granted that they will be paid more attention and be taken more seriously uh, than I am. It's like, I have to work at least 10 or 20 times harder. And it doesn't help the fact that with the fact that I'm an actress also. So somehow they kind of, uh, attach that into a ditzy category or a glamour category where they are tuned to only see you in a particular way. So it is a challenge. It is a struggle. <clears throat> I've learned my own, like in my own way, how to deal with it. Of course, I'm a much more stronger person now. In the beginning, it would really bother me. Now it doesn't really bother me. Like I know how to squash. But you know, in the beginning, when you're just trying to figure out, you don't understand why you know, you're being treated differently or why everything is like a huge deal or why every uh, con conversation eventually takes some kind of sexual angle, you know? It's like you can't, at times I felt like you can't even have like a good vibe or a good conversation because immediately it's misunderstood into something else, you know? Now it has come down to some extent because at least be, I, I guess a lot of people are a lot more scared you know, but it's a challenge. It really is there. I, you know, I guess they're just <laughs> hoping. <laughs> <laughs> so the trick that I feel is to just kind of squash the hope in the beginning. And yeah, mm -hmm. just put it out there. <laughs> <Nope. laughs> Let's get on with an actual conversation. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a process. But yes, what you're saying is absolutely true. You know, uh, it is very, very, very relevant. And I think we, again, we have a long way to go, a long way to go. So what do you like the most about acting? Because I know you haven't really touched on that too, too much. What do you love mm -hmm. the most when you're in front of that camera? What brings it for you here? Uh, I, it's hard to kind of explain. It's, first of all, I realize I'm very comfortable. Something uh, I'm, you know, I'm more comfortable, I guess, in front of the camera than behind, uh, than uh, you know, in normal life. Uh, somehow, I find it very cathartic, you know, because in normal life I have to, uh, you know, play a particular kind of role to some extent. With acting, I get to kind of explore different avenues of my personality, no matter what character is given to me. So I find a particular type of joy in that. I like. Uh, playing dress up, playing different characters. It's fun, it's entertaining, it's draining at the same time, but it's like, a, there's a word in Hindi called sukoon, which means peace, you know? It kind of gives me that, nothing else gives me that, you know? So it's just, um, it's for me, it's just pure magic. Like I don't, nothing else, to give, and 
it comes easily too. You know, it's like, uh, even though it's hard and the process at times may be hard, the shooting may be hard, the characters may be intense, like this film that I did, but there's this, there's still kind of a fluid sort of organic way in which it just happens, you know, and in which I get to channel and I find a lot of, uh, I don't know, even kind of spiritual peace in that, you know. It's just an energy that I feel that I never want to let go of. You know, I've always wanted to act too when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And even to this day, I still want to do it. Whether I'll ever get the opportunity, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I have always wanted to play a character that is like mm -hmm. a villain that can oh. bend good yes. and evil to my yes. will. <laughs> and I have like crazy colored hair, like maybe dark blue and purple uh -huh. or something like that. Uh -huh. Just something cool that people would like fear but mm -hmm. yet i'm i'm interesting in, in myself what mm -hmm. would be that type of character for you if you got to play anything whether you write it yourself mm -hmm. or or somebody else puts it what would that role be or what would that character be um you know uh i've been asked this question before and honestly speaking i don't think i actually first of all i want to play everything everything fair enough and uh the grayer the characters the better if that makes sense you know yeah, the grayer like i don't really want to do black and white you know i don't want to be a good person i don't want to be a bad person i want to be i like being messy in probably every situation i guess you know it's it's uh, more of a challenge to kind of play a character that's just messy no matter what the profession or what the person looks like or what the setup is I like playing messy characters in the gray, you know, making questionable choices. <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, like making also like just uh, doing very questionable things, you know, good or bad, you know, I, I like being in that kind of zone. I love comedy. I love comedy. I haven't been able to explore that too much. So that's something I'm really looking forward to. I'm a huge fan and I would love to explore, you know, arenas like that too. But yeah, you know, so- Questionable that, choices, that yeah. is me, that is my yeah. life. <laughs> so I guess I'm already in your role. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we're gonna be talking about your movie, all the, um, yeah, mm -hmm. when the music changes. And we are going to be discussing that in more detail. We want to get into the nitty gritty of it all. So don't go away and we'll be right back in about three minutes. So, all right, everybody, we are back. We have our guest on here and she's talking to us about her brand new film called When the Music Changes. I'm really excited to talk to her about this. This is fun. And she not only wrote and directed it, but she also stars in it. So she's a <laughs> she is a triple uh, triple threat on this movie. And now we're going to get into the fun stuff. So you're going to learn about all the behind the scenes uh, happenings and stuff. So welcome back. And we're, let's Thank kind of start you. off with, um, let's let's first talk about the plot of the movie. What is that? Mm. Don't give away too, too much. We've got to leave a little okay. meat on the bone for him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, the plot is basically, um, I can tell you what kind of inspired me to kind of, I, I think that'll be a better thing than the plot itself, because if I give up the plot, pretty much the God. movie's right out there. So um, uh, I, uh, I wanted to kind of explore the power dynamic. Like if we look into history, uh, anytime there's a war that is won or anything along those ways, or even in today's world, like if you want to hurt a man, what do you do? You attack his wife, you attack his daughter, you attack his sister. It's like somehow the other were accessories to a main person. You have a man and then you have the accessory as the woman. You want to hurt him, you get to the woman. And somehow this is like an acceptable thing. It's been done all throughout history and it's done even now. So that I found very interesting. It's like, if you have a fight with another man, instead of just picking it up with him, why do you want to go and rape his mother or his sister or his singer? Why is that even a threat, you know? Uh, so I wanted to kind of explore that, which I've done with this film. Uh, also, I've also ex um, I've explored the uh, basis of, um, of victim shaming, shaming and uh, 
honor shaming. Like if you do, if something like this does happen to you, you know, it's a, it's a huge deal in most countries, you know, where you believe that, you know, your, your honor is lost and everything is lost and you have nothing to live for. And it's also um, a look into um, uh, a kind of, uh, this thing into a mental and physical abuse at the same time, like which one is worse? You know, at times you just don't know. You know, so it's a heavy film. It really is. Please do not watch it with children. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I did this kind of thing. Just don't. Like even it's even hard for, uh, you know, adults. I uh, when the, this was in the theaters, it was I had like people. There were a few girls who just got up running and crying. Other people, everyone was silent. You know, I made it impact. I made it this raw and gruesome so that it would kind of stir up some kind of change. And it, you know, you would get a bellyache that would kind of inspire to some extent, you know, with regards to rape culture and rape jokes, stuff like that. So that's kind of where the uh, film kind of popped up from. <laughs> now, talking about that, I mean, obviously it interests you, but there had to be some major event that you saw, read about, maybe happened to you mm -hmm. that would even spark you to follow that. So what was that? Mm -hmm. that, that Multiple multiple, multiple things. It, it, it's inclusive of so many stories that were surrounded me, that surrounded me, that I read about, that I consistently read about, uh, that ha kept happening with the people around me that inspired the film. It is a culmination of so many people's stories. The, the characters that you see are characters that you normally meet in real life. You know, the instances that you see are real life instances that, you know, you will come across, you know, nothing is absolute fiction. Honestly, it was just really pulled from a lot of real life incidents. You know, people that I've dealt with personally, people that I have witnessed other people deal with personally, you know, and uh, that's what kept me thinking. There was kind of an instance where I used to have the whole, the actual line, apart from, of course, it's a heavy topic, but the actual story started because of an annoyance that happened. I used to have an um, ex-boyfriend who wouldn't pick up the phone. He just wouldn't pick up the phone. So, and this would, it would just, it, and, you know, it would, it would irk me, you know, as in, I would always wonder how hard is it to pick up the phone? So it got me thinking into one day, what if I'm actually in trouble and I'm calling someone and he doesn't pick up the phone? That thought became the entire screenplay. So it actually went from there, from me just being annoyed to everything else that was already in me, like the history, what I had seen, what I had read, of course, this thing. But it started actually from that annoyance as in, pick up the phone. <laughs> you know? Like, what if someone's calling you, they're in trouble? You know, so that kind of thing. I've always lived out of my hometown from the time I was quite young. So, um, you know, we like my parents are still back in India. I, I live in New York and I was born here. I live here now. My siblings are here, but my parents live back in India. And, you know, so for me, not picking up the phone is not really a thing. You know, I need to be able to keep in touch, make sure, you know, know that everyone is safe and secure. So when I have a relationship with someone who doesn't pick up the phone, <laughs> it's a thing, you know? Isn't that one of the biggest complaints that women have anyways? I don't know, probably, yes, yes, pick up the phone. it is, it is, pick up the phone, pick up the phone, you know? Yeah, and that's actually why I wrote, so I knew, I know, I knew that I was getting annoyed and then I looked around and like, just like what you said, all of the other women around me were facing exactly the same thing, whether they were just dating or whether they've been married for 15 years. It was the same thing, like pick up the phone. <laughs> you know? So that's where it kind of started. <laughs> so out of all the characters that you wrote, what, which character do you believe is the most powerful character and why? Mm. Most powerful character. I, I don't know. I think, I don't know if they're, I guess the protagonist per se, she is the most powerful because she's the one who overcomes, at least in the story. But um, she herself is a mess. You know, she's a mess. Everybody else is a mess. She has a boyfriend who's uh, the definition of a narcissist. 
uh, you know, it's lovely watching that on screen because whenever you think you're in an nice relationship and then you watch that this is one of the major feedbacks that I get, I'm like, hmm. you know, people tell me like my boyfriend's like that, <laughs> you know, you kind of get to yeah. know and understand. And um, the, a huge question, I remember a few people had asked me, like, if, you know, she's a smart, capable, independent woman who, you know, is raised in the United States, but then she goes back to India. She has a long distance relationship with this man. She goes back to India to um, film a documentary and see her boyfriend. And uh, uh, if he is like this, why is she with him? But then in real life, I mean, don't we I say that about all of our friends? <laughs> why is she dating him like right. why why so that's what i said i said that because it's true that's what happens you have very smart women who make very dumb decisions at times it's a thing and it's real you know don't question it they may just because someone's smart on some level doesn't mean that they're smart in every aspect of their life they're vulnerable they uh you know are sensitive you know there may be something that they're holding on to some kind of toxic trauma that they're trying to you know live up to and stuff like that so everyone's their own kind of justified messy every character <laughs> i get it i totally get it we're all a hot mess in some way shape, or form. Yeah. so tell me a little bit about directing the the film what was one of the most difficult things for you to do and what were some of the easier things for you to do as a director um I, I think one of the most um, difficult things with but we shot it, this it's a midland feature film it's 48 minutes and we shot the entire thing in three days now this wasn't two people sitting in a room sort of film this is multiple heavy cast multiple locations sort of like a whole you know like a whole setup or whole unit sort of thing so shooting the entire thing in 48 minutes was a huge deal of course, I had wonderful technicians because of which I could pull it off. So that was a main challenge because we barely had time to breathe and eat, you know, and the fact that the entire crew actually went through this with us is wonderful, you know, I'm really indebted to them. And uh, acting, directing uh, is, is, I think it's kind of my niche. I really do enjoy it, but it, I must say it is difficult, especially there's a very gruesome scene uh, in the film. Uh, it's painful to watch and to have to go through that and then go back to the monitor and check it again and go back and do it. It's just, it's physically exhausting. It's mentally draining and painful. So those are kind of the difficult things. The, the, the best thing about directing is you have creative freedom. I don't have to ask anyone anything. I know what's going on in my mind. I don't have to <laughs> explain my character to me, to the protagonist, <laughs> because I know. <laughs> so a lot of, that's like the easier part of it. Uh, I also, since I had written uh, the film, you know, you it's so much more closer to you. You know every nook and cranny, and you also are there to kind of see what, you know, what kind of reveals itself on set, so. It, it was uh, one hell of an experience. It really was, you know, I'm very proud of the film and will always be very close to me no matter what other film I do. And also you got in front of it. So was it difficult mm -hmm. to direct it and act in it? And what is your mm -hmm. character? And uh, what was some of her more uh, notable traits? Mm, uh, yeah, so like I said, um, directing and acting, um, I, I didn't, I mean, I had done it before, but never on this kind of level. So it was a challenge, but it's a welcome challenge. I look forward to doing it again. Uh, because the film was really heavy, it had kind of difficult spots, you know, especially when you're doing scenes that are extremely raw and gruesome to go back and have to watch that again, and again, and again, and again, it can be very, very painful. So that was a huge aspect of it to make sure that everyone is online and in tune with what is going on. You have to make sure that you have a wonderful team, which I did, you know, so I was able to kind of pull it off. My character, she is an Indian American girl who is raised in the United States, but has a long uh, distance boyfriend who lives in India. She's a filmmaker. She goes down to India to actually film a documentary and meet her boyfriend and this, uh, you know, a, a terrible thing kind of happens to her. Now, according to her, because she is Indian, I mean, she's American, but she's Indian. And so her viewpoint of India is not marred 
you know, she loves the country. She thinks it's colorful and it's so cultural. And, you know, there's so many wonderful elements that she doesn't understand. Uh, what do you say? The, the kind of um, the fine print, if I may say, with, that runs within the culture. So that's when she kind of gets this whole shock value sort of thing that happens within the story. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so when you first wrote it to how it ends in mm -hmm. the final in the final piece sometimes things are strictly to strict uh, to the script mm -hmm. i mean it, it does not deviate and then there's mm -hmm. some that have artistically changed along mm -hmm. the way mm -hmm. when you first wrote it to what it ha to the to the end of it how did how close was it to the script and also mm -hmm. to finish off that question did it come out better than you thought um it is almost completely identical to what I had written and it came out leaps and bounds better than anything that I could have ever imagined. It really did. Everyone, every actor did such a brilliant job. My technicians did a wonderful job. You know, it was, uh, it was a heavy film to pull off, you know, and I'm very proud of everyone associated with it. You know, I couldn't have asked for more. Well, we got only a few minutes left before I got to go. So I guess the last question I would ask about the movie is, what do you hope people take away from it? I hope it instigates change. I made the film, uh, what do you say, kind of um, irking at points so that, you know, it disturbs you enough to instigate change. You know, sometimes people take things very lightly, you know, not understanding, you know, how much of depth can actually go into it. So I hope that on one hand, it instigates change. And on the other hand, if any, uh, if we have, uh, you know, uh, survivors who have gone through this, you know, they kind of watch the film and get some amount of strength from it with the statements that have been made on honor shaming and what it is to lose or not lose your honor and so on and so forth. So basically, I think it is, I hope that it inspires change. That's kind of what my prayer is for the film. Well, the most important part is how can people see it and how can people um, either get it on like video on demand? Is it in mm -hmm. theaters? And of course, how can people follow you and see what you got going on? Uh, well, the, uh, the film, uh, you can watch it. It's very easy. It's on iTunes, it's on Google Play, and it's on YouTube movies. So any one of these platforms, uh, you can just, uh, you can rent it, you can buy it. And a, a percentage of the profit also goes to Planned Parenthood. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a cause that I genuinely believe in and I'd like to support. So whenever you do rent or buy this, you know, I will make sure that the donations actually made to Planned Parenthood. And if you do want to follow me, I'm quite active on social media. So on Instagram, it's at Lakshmi Devi and Twitter is at Lakshmi Devi NYC and Facebook is at Lakshmi Devi NYC. And of course, I'm going to have all those in the links as well. So people will be able to go to it pretty easily. But thank mm -hmm. you so much for coming on and being a great guest. I mean, I love your thank story. You. It's very inspirational. And um, I really hope that this movie does well for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. You're welcome. And guys, we unfortunately are done 30 minutes already. I, it's just <laughs> gone by. I can't believe it. But that means that we will be back again next week. So we have the same time, same channel, just like the old Batman cliche that they used to have. <laughs> uh, and we would love to have you back. So stay safe, stay mm -hmm. healthy. We will see you again next week and have a great, have a great time. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> like, OMG, you were on TV and junk.